Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to be playing in my Dina Wakely multi-surface journal. This is the 85 by 11 version. Now not the biggest one because there is a larger one on the market. And I'm also going to be playing with a brand new stamp from Indigo Blue. This is the Giant Death's Head Moth stamp um, called Clarice. Um, obviously inspired by Silence of the Lambs. So it's quite a large sized stamp as you can see in the palm of my hand. Um, if I've got a ruler I'll give you a measurement. And we'll do it in old money first. So it's about about five and a half inches across and from top to bottom it's probably about three inches deep. So it's a decent sized one. It fits perfectly um, on a a2 sized card front, there you go, um, or A6 card as these are in Europe and the UK. So this stamp isn't going to be released um, until September the 21st. I've got a sneak peek to play with um, that Indigo Blue sent to me along with some other Halloween stamps. Uh, this is part of the Halloween range. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be having a play with that today. So put that to one side. It will be launched on the website, Indigo Blue website, I should say, on September the 21st, and also um, via the Hachanda um, TV shopping channel here in the UK. So that's what I'm going to be playing with today. But first of all, I want to do some background. Now I have a little poem, a little four line poem that I wrote just especially for this art journal page, I wanted to play with the imagery of um, of dancing and flying round flames, obviously because it's a moth. So I'm just going to add some matte medium onto my page, grab a brush, put a little bit of a coating down there, and then I'm going to just stick those down. I'm going to put them slightly at an angle. I'm putting these down first because I will be adding some colour over the top. There we go. I printed these off using my Epson WF 2630 printer so it is waterproof once dry. And now that's down, I can get that dried off and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's all nice and dry. So I want to start adding some um, paint down on the page, but I want it all kind of loose. Uh, I've not gessoed, I know, and I'm going to use some Dina Wakely Sedona reddish paint. So I'm going to do a little bit of that just around the page. And I'm going to cre the, create a like, double page kind of spread and I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just going to whiz that round and I'll just put my thumb in it which is typical for me I want a really kind of loose effect and I know if I'd have put gesso down first of all it would have been a lot more easier but I want a kind of really sketchy, wild kind of affair on this. Okay, so got that. So get that dry I'm off my fingers. Baby wipe. There. So once I've got this dry, I'll be right back. Okay, so now that reddish Sedona paint is nice and dry, I'm going to bring in some of the uh, some of the Dinner Wakely copper paint, the penny. And I'm going to do a similar thing. Ooh, it's nice, nice and fluid, just around the edges, because I want a little bit of like metallic-y shine in here as well. So again, using a baby wipe, I'm just going to start adding that around the edges. Just blend it a little bit together. Mm. 
So I'll just quickly going around the edges, picking up some of that paint, get it all nice and warm reddish tones. That copper paint adds that real kind of nice metallic -y glint into the background. And again, let's get this all nice and dry and then I'll be right back also once I've got rid of all the paint off my fingers. So now that the copper is dry, you can see that there's just that nice kind of glint around the edges, some nice kind of warm, hearthy kind of um, shine coming from around there. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve is some kind of warm, fireish kind of look. So with that in mind, I've now got the Dina Wakely cheddar. So I'm going to grab some of that and add some of that also around the inside of the page just so I've got kind of like an uneven gradiated look and again with a baby wipe I'm just going to rub around and kind of just fill in those gaps. I can go over at this point and rub in just where we've missed off up there because it is going to be a bit lighter over this side because we've got that matte medium underneath but I like the fact that there's different tones in the page and it's not perfect or uniform I kind of like that idea and we'll just fill in the rest of those gaps Okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit more just to this side. Just to kind of even and close up that gap a little bit. Liking that. Dump that in the bin. So once again, get it dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that orange is dry, the final touch is to add some yellow. So I've got the Dina Wakely lemon, and I'm just going to add that to this side just to finish off that kind of gradiated dark red to orange to yellow right there in the middle. And just start blending that out and adding those colour, bring it down. That's it. Cool. Like the way that it's all kind of uneven, a kind of reddish, yellowy, um, almost a bonfire, embers kind of look to it, or I think it does anyway. So I'll get that dried off and then I can start adding some more layers, a little bit of stenciling texture and then I'll be right back. Okay so next up I have a stencil, this is called Carnival 2. There is a Carnival 1, um, but at the moment I just want to use this one. So I'm going to just drop that down. This will be um, available to pre-order on my website fairly soon. I'm not sure whether this is going to be an October release or whether it's going to be um, a November release. I haven't really decided. So I've taken some of that copper paint, some of that Penny Dina Wakely copper paint and I've loaded up a cosmetic sponge. Now I'm just going to start bringing some of that pattern in just into the background. Which will then connect to the outside border. Just 
just bringing that in like so and then we'll bring some of that down here onto this side and do the same thing bringing some of those fabulous little star diamond patterns just add a little bit more paint on there that's it and then just bring that over into that red like that and then finally I want to add some more over here so I'm creating that kind of visual triangle around the double page spread that will help to draw the eye in just adds some interest into the background and helps to connect the interior of the art journal page to the outside by the border just helps to to bring in a little bit of cohesion into that page and of course it will also help um, and bring a little bit of that shine glitz through the metallic paint so again I want to get it all dry and then I'll be right back okay so next it's time to add the stamped image of the moth and I've mounted it on what they call a rocker block so this is a great way to be able to add images onto an uneven surface as you can place the edge of it down and because it's curved it then rolls over the top so it's great for uneven surfaces and also if you have dexterity problems it does help too if you can't get you know a decent grip on a larger sized stamp so just ink that up hopefully it will be dark enough but if it isn't and that's okay so what I'm going to try and do is try and do it so it's pretty much towards the center of my page I'm going to press down and just rock it forward and hopefully I've got a decent impression sort of in the middle of that page because it's a textured page it's not 100% perfect I wasn't really expecting it to be you know a, a brilliant um, impression but you work with what you've got I'll give that a good ink and I'm going to just turn the page around and do the same thing at this side I think about there should do it so straight down Give it a rock. That's a bit better. That's a little bit better. And just put it to one side. And then, because it's archival ink, it will just take a few seconds to dry. So just give it a quick blast. And then just to finish off, I'm going to bring back in that Sedona paint, that red Sedona paint a little bit on my mat there and I have another cosmetic sponge fantastic disposable cosmetic sponges and I've also got my favorite stencil of all time which is art is stencil and what I'm going to do so I'm just going to drop that down and just add in a little bit of text just kind of into the background and then fade it out towards the top just like that and then I'll bring it down here add a little bit more on this side and of course because it's not um, a, it's 
not clear text. You just get that impression of the text. You don't have to be perfect with it. So you can literally just dab it on. Just gives you that real nice impression of the text. Like so. And maybe just a little bit up there. And then just fade it out. Liking that. And then if you want to, just to add a little bit of extra glitz, I'm going to just bring that other that um, carnival stencil back in and I have some gold, some of the gilt. And I'm just going to add in a few little highlights of gold. So I've got, I'll just use the other side of the cosmetic sponge. And then like down here, I can just add in just a few light touches of the gold. And then maybe up here, just to add in an extra kind of level And then maybe just, just a little bit there, just to help it all gel a bit. And I think once we've got that dry, move that out of the way. I think I'm actually going to call this page done once we're dry. So let's just give it a quick blast. So looking at it, I'm thinking there's one thing missing. We're going to need a few black splatters. So I'm just going to grab a little water, a little black paint. I have my fan brush and I'll just mix that up and then we can just add in Just a few not too many. Maybe just a couple of heavier ones down there. And I think that is done. Because I've splattered my hands now. If you're not happy with the way that the stamping has been done or it doesn't turn out, then it's not a problem. If you wanted to, you could then stamp out two of those moths um, onto card, colour them in if you want, if you didn't want the colour coming through, and then stick them down over the top of where you've already done. So you can literally use that as a template, a positioning template, stamp onto paper, colour them in, cut them out, and then just stick them down over the top if you wanted to. But to be honest, I like the colour. I like the fact that they're not solid, that they're kind of transient on the page. I like the fact that they're slightly transparent and translucent and you've got that colour, which is the similar sort of colours to the moths themselves because they're all kind of oranges and cream colours and gold colours. So I like the fact that they're gravitating towards that brighter centre, which looks kind of like the middle of a flame with those ready tones coming on the outside. So I think I'm gonna call this page done. I just need to sign it and date it if I can find my pen. I've got a food ball pen here somewhere. There we go. So I'm just going to sign it and date it the 11th of September, 2018. And I'm happy with that.